doing, Max? Yeah, you look a little bit cold. And yeah, how are you? I think you've put on a little tiny bit of weight. That's a good sign. That's a good sign. Maxime has um, cerebral palsy. He's very contracted here, very, very contracted. And he's got a lot of curvature in the spine here as well. Poor little pet. This time last year, Maxime was on, on death's door, really. He was grossly underweight and his body had even started to deteriorate and go terribly, terribly cold. And our nurses didn't think at one stage that he'd even survive the night, one of the nights we were here. So they surrounded him with um, empty belly gown bottles, actually. They just filled them with lukewarm water and just put them all around his little cold body um, to keep him warm and to keep him alive. And um, his will to live is strong. <coughs> oh, God bless you, dealing, dealing. If it was my kids, I would love so much coming and look after them. I mean, they are human beings, and I know people might forget that just because we say they have a physical defect or a mental defect, but I mean, the first thing is... that we can never forget we say, when you look at those kids, we say, and the way they just look at you or the love they give you or they just give you a pat in the head or just something like that, it's so hard to buy. It's so just. And when you go, you, you think of him. You'd think of him many as the day we say, and a lot of the other kids too, when they're just lying here in their bed, we'd say. And you'd just love to be here, but you know you cannot, but in your heart you're here with them. So you are. This morning, Christina and Olya are at the centre of the celebrity spotlight in Cork. But before the day is out, they'll be confronted with some very tough decisions about their future. Um, it's just amazing. I, I think the, the, the minute they come home, we, we call this their home, their, their Irish home. And as soon as they come in the door, they, they, they change from being two little orphans to being two little girls. And they, 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 they play like two, two, any, any two kids and they, 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 they get up to mischief like any two kids. I mean, the, the first time I saw them uh, picking up a hoover and, and, and starting to hoover the house, my, my initial reaction was to go up and help them to, to, to lift her and tell them it's okay, I'll do it. But they want to do these things. I mean, Christina will sweep the whole floor and she'll do as good a job as I will, definitely, you know. And um, they just love to help around the house and, and it's, it's, I just think it's fantastic to, to, to watch them do this, and to see how they integrate into the family. But I would hope for eventually for Christina and Olga is that someday we could get operations done if as is possible. Um, I don't know what that entails. There, 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 we, we have spoken to consultants and there, there has been mention of amputation, especially in Christina's um, case. Um, for me, that's a horrific um, thought, but at, at the same time, um, we, we will explore every avenue to, to, to see what can be done for them. The huge dilemma facing Christina is that she could be spending life in an adult mental asylum in Belarus if she's not able to walk by the time she's 18. Today is a very special day for us and we're going to see a specialist in the orthopaedic hospital today and we're hoping to get some answers as to what the possibilities can be done for Christina and Olga. Um, we were going to discuss um, the amputation and possibly about what health prosthesis limbs would be for Christina. We're very, very apprehensive as to the outcome of this. She walks on her knees. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and her feet yeah. themselves yeah. are, are quite muscular. quite bad. Yeah. Alge, can you just explain to her that there's another patient mm-hmm. of yeah. Andreas here's yeah. here from yeah. Belarus yeah. and she had a problem with her legs mm-hmm. and Andreas mm-hmm. has given her new legs yeah. and she's going to show them to her so she can see what's possible. No. No? No? no. This is a little bit risky because I suppose in a way it's a little bit about tough love. I mean, we can't tell Christina that if she doesn't, if we don't intervene with a small bit of amputation and prosthetics, that she could possibly end up in another mental asylum, which is a semi-prison, which would be a fate worse than death. It means that she will be confined in the system for the rest of her life. It's a big, big thing to ask from the hand in your leg, your feet, yeah, and you're very small. You think, no, and you see this for the first time. It's very difficult to, yeah, for her now to say, you can have my feet. Yeah, that's that's the problem I think. But uh, being in a wheelchair and, and not being mobile, uh, and especially in her case, if she has to go to uh, her future, looks very bleak if she cannot uh, mobilize, be mobile be mobile so so does you really have to go for amputation then. Come on Christina let's you know this. Know this? No? It's it's hard to consider them cutting anything off no. of this girl because she's so precious I want to keep every single piece of her. But at the same time if it's gonna improve her life, maybe it's it's an option that we can now consider. Uh, we've definitely got more options than we had coming in and for that I'm very, very grateful. Christina and Olya returned to Vesnova Orphanage in July. Their Irish medical team is still trying to decide on the best way to overcome their disabilities.